Welcome to this video on hydropower. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world. So please do subscribe to the channel to stay informed on renewable energy and sustainability. In this video, we are going to cover hydropower or hydel energy. Both terms imply the extraction of energy from running or falling water. The terms are also used in reference to freshwater and not seawater. The process of hydropower generation requires creating a barrier in the path of flowing water. The water is channeled and made to drop where its potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and this energy is then extracted by means of a turbine. The scale of hydropower is extremely vast. Energy can be generated from a few watts to several gigawatts. In fact, the world's largest power plant is a hydroenergy project called the Three Gorges Dam in China. It has a nameplate capacity of a whopping 22 gigawatts. Large-scale hydro projects cannot just power towns and cities, but a whole country. The scales of hydropower are as follows. Pico Hydroenergy comprises of projects which have a capacity of 5 kilowatts or less. Micro Hydro means capacities of 5 kilowatts to 100 kilowatts. Small scale hydro means capacities of 10 megawatts or less. Anything above 10 megawatts is classified as large scale hydro. There are many countries that are heavily reliant on hydropower. For example, Norway gets more than 98% of its energy through hydropower. Even to this day, hydropower is one of the cheapest modes of electricity generation. Furthermore, the energy extracted is renewable energy. Water is constantly replenished by nature because of the water cycle. There are no CO2 emissions when converting water's kinetic energy into electricity. This does not, however, mean that hydropower does not have any negative environmental impact as will be explored later in the video. Burns, streams, and rivers all have different levels of water flow. The flow rate of fresh water also varies across the year and therefore to extract energy there are different types of turbines, some more suitable than the others depending upon the head of water and the flow rate. The head of water is the measure of hydrostatic energy of water. It is simply the height of water above a certain point. For hydropower it is the measure of the height that will be available above the turbine. And then there is also the flow rate. The flow rate is the volume of water crossing a certain point in a second. Based on the head of water and the flow rate at a certain location, the turbine type is selected. There are four major types of turbines. They are as follows. Number one, Kaplan turbine. Number two, Francis turbine. Number three, cross flow turbines or band key turbines. And number four, the Pelton wheel. The chart here shows the operating envelope of the turbines based on the flow rate and the head of water. For example, when there is high head and low flow rate, then Pelton wheel is used. On the other hand, when the head of water is low and the flow rate is high, then Kaplan turbines are used. Pelton wheel is an impulse turbine, whereas Kaplan turbine is a reaction turbine. There is also Francis turbine which falls in the middle. Francis turbines are used for medium head levels and medium flow rates. The operational envelope of Francis turbine is very wide. It is a hybrid turbine in that it utilizes both impulse of the force and reaction of the force. Another advantage of Francis turbine is that it can also act as a pump for pump storage systems which will be discussed later in the video. It is interesting to note that both Kaplan turbine and Francis turbine can reach operational efficiencies of over 90%, making them the most efficient renewable energy devices in the market. And lastly, there is the cross-flow turbine or the Banky turbine. It is a slow-moving machine which is well suited for locations with a low head of water but with high flow rate. Being a slow mover, the turbine is easier to maintain as the bearings don't need to be replaced often. Furthermore, the turbine is self-cleaning and gets clogged up less frequently compared to other turbines. 
the efficiency of cross flow turbine and the Pelton wheel is lower than that of Francis turbine and Kaplan turbine. Now there are other varieties of turbines also available particularly at the micro scale. There are turbines with helical blades that can even run in the shallowest and slowest of running water. For instance, the motor rotor turbine can utilize water as slow as 2 miles per hour. One of the advantages of hydropower is their usage as pump storage project. The idea of these projects is to meet the high electricity demand during peak times. It should be noted that our electricity requirements change through the day. Pump storage provides an energy buffer. During the times of calm when electricity usage is low and there is excess electricity in the grid, then during those times water is pumped back from the lower elevation reservoir to the higher elevation reservoir. This is done by using grid electricity and running the turbine in reverse which allows it to act as a pump. The pumping of water increases the reservoir capacity and the water head. This additional water is then used during the peak energy demand times, which can occur during the day or during the evenings. The water that was pumped back can then be utilized alongside existing and incoming water to run the turbines to their peak capacity. Alongside the many positives of hydropower, there are also a few negatives. For example, to harness hydropower, particularly at large scales, dams have to be constructed that come at a huge cost. Creating a barrier across flowing water floods the upstream lands. This means that the natural environment is destroyed and the habitat of not only plants and animals is affected but also people living in the vicinity have to be moved. There are many fish species that spawn upstream of the river. The building of a dam blocks their migration path. Although by providing a fish ladder this problem can be alleviated to a large extent. Similarly, there are many freshwater fish species that cannot migrate downstream because of the barrier. Accumulation of silt, debris and deadwood can reduce the capacity of the dam over time. Furthermore, the decaying plantation that stagnates upstream of the barrier also produces emissions. And lastly, building a large dam can also alter the natural water table in downstream lands. It should be noted that due to strict environmental legislations, it is difficult to build large-scale hydropower projects in modern times. The best practice is therefore to have several small-scale run-of-the-river schemes than a few large ones. In the run-of-the-river project, a portion of water from a river or a stream is channeled into pipes that transport the water to a powerhouse. A turbine is located in the powerhouse that utilizes this siphoned water to generate electricity. The powerhouse is located at a much lower elevation than the point where the water is bled from the river or the stream. Run of the river schemes are relatively environmentally friendly, although their return on investment is lower than large scale projects. The other advantage of run of the river scheme is that they are easy to build and commission and can be completed within days or weeks as opposed to large scale projects that can take several years to build. Now let's look at the estimation of hydropower at a given location. The total amount of power that can be extracted by a turbine can be determined by a simple formula. The formula is P equals to nu times rho times Q times G times H, where P is the power in watts, nu is the dimensionless efficiency of the turbine. For Francis and Kaplan turbines, it's nearly 92%. Rho is the density of water in kg per meter cube. Q is the flow rate in cubic meters per second. G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is the height difference between the inlet and the outlet in meters. And with this, the video on hydropower is completed. Make sure you like the video if you learned from it and do subscribe to the channel 
to remain updated with the latest information on renewable energy and sustainability. Thank you for your attention.